2020 first round pick to the Knicks. Well, if that is not worthy of the trade Craig, yeah. I don't know what <laughs> is because we are back in business, uh, baby. Ramona, this is huge. Yeah. Isaiah Thomas back in LA. I kind of, but not I how we so expected. <laughs> Um, you know, it was funny coming into like maybe yesterday. I would have said. Brian, by the way, he's not even getting off. Like, his he's phone. not even. We got a even minute flinch. and forty-five seconds, and he's like, something could still happen. You know what Brian was like right there? He's like, he's like the Matt Barnes play with the ball right in his face. Right, <laughs> right there, uh, right there. Yeah. Boom. He's Didn't even taste. It's been going on for years. <laughs> <He's> been... <laughs> Honestly, coming into yesterday, I thought the Los Angeles Dodgers won the NBA trade deadline. I thought Mookie Betts was going to be the biggest name that we right. saw move. Woo! It has been bananas today, yeah. Paul. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think of this deal that not only lands Marcus Morris, but Isaiah Thomas now is a clipper? Yeah, I mean, they got just more veterans in the locker room, which is good for a long playoff run. And, they get, and I think, it, you know, for the rest of the season, yeah. it allows them to kind of rest some of their other veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, they, their whole thing is they want to get to the playoffs healthy. Mm -hmm. That's all that's on their mind. They don't care if they get the number one seed. Home court advantage. They just want to get there, to the some, postseason there, there, healthy. There's something else in play. All right, the reason so. they did this deal also was to get out of the luxury tax. So this trade for Marcus Morris pushed him into the luxury tax. Swapping Jerome Robinson to mix a little bit more money for Isaiah Thomas. Get some a veteran player. You're right, yeah. Paul. Mm -hmm. Get some out of luxury tax, which Steve Ballmer isn't trying to save money, but they know that they're going to have to pay the tax in the future. Billionaires. So they're just it. like us. The other thing I'll point out is Darren Collison yep. is a guy who's been on the on the boards for both the Clippers and the Lakers, mm -hmm. potentially coming out of his brief retirement. With his trade, even though the Clippers have roster spots, I think it makes it more likely that Darren Collison will not be a Clipper. And if the Lakers decide to go that route, that the yep. Lakers don't have a roster spot right now, they'd have to do something. I think it's more likely that Darren Collison would end up as a Laker. So, all right, guys. So we are just 11 seconds Seven, to the deadline. Six, you are definitely five, going again, huh? four, three, <laughs> two, one. Oh yeah, there we go. It's New Year's. Hey, I just want you to knock it down. I can never get right, used so to just that. Get right up next but just so you know, like, I know, I, I know, but the trades, there'll still possibly be more trades coming yeah. in. Yes. So save some of your confetti. That's Don't right. Worry, because I still have it. And there you go. I'm just getting in my water now. There you go. I really have to say, this has turned yeah. into a pretty crazy tread deadline, and I yeah. do think it's a little bit about the fact that we don't expect as much movement this summer as with, you know, a lot of summers that we had. Certainly, it's not going to be like the summer of, 2020, of, of this past summer. Yeah, but I think if we look at the actual deal, yep. I'm going to be serious here with the confetti all over mm -hmm. me. If we look at the actual <laughs> deals that have happened with the contenders, the Miami Heat and the, and the Clippers, in terms of contenders' moves, yes. yep. move forward at the deadline. Going forward, I think you see the, the Minnesota Timberwolves have made a big move forward. I'm not really sure what the Cleveland Cavaliers... <laughs> Have done. They made no, a big I mean, move look, today, but I'm not sure. I, I thought Zach Lowe's point about the Cavs was yeah. a good one. At, at that price, yeah. Why aren't you making that deal, well, right? I, it, good with, for them. With Cleveland, like you have a you have a chance to add a 26 year old All Star yeah. to a, to a, you know and you have three Wait, months to, to, a young to, team? to maybe you to, can do to something a young with team. Them, figure out. Great. The other thing that's just, I, I think second? is really going to develop here in the next couple of days is. Unless there's a last-minute deal that Woj is going to tell us about, and you can use that again. <laughs> Tristan Thompson was not traded. That's right. There yes. was like six centers traded over this last three days. Mm -hmm. Tristan mm -hmm. Thompson was not one of them. There has been a belief in the league, and frankly, his agent has been clear, Rich Paul has been clear, that Tristan is not interested in taking a buyout. Because if you take a buyout, even if he doesn't plan on being with the Cavs, you lose your bird rights and you can't be executed in a sign-and-trade. But considering where they are now, where Andre Drummond is going to be their starting center, he has to play a lot of minutes going down the stretch. Tristan's not going to play, not going to be able to improve his value. I think the chances of Tristan Thompson buyout have increased dramatically. That means if you're a fan of the Boston Celtics, uh. your ears perk way up right now. Yep. The Boston Celtics would be major in the market. You, for I think guy. he would be such a good fit there, right? Absolutely. Yes. They're, they're, um, and the Clippers, who still have, believe it or not, the Clippers could, could still use a center. Yeah. And I think if he becomes available... Although the Clippers are looking for more shooting at that position, he could come there. But if you're a Boston Celtics fan right now, even though your team didn't do anything, you are really peaking a very close eye on Tristan Thompson. Because if Tristan Thompson goes to the Celtics, that could be the type of move that changes the balance of the power in the Eastern Conference. Well, first of all, to finish up on the Cavs, I would say this, that they have had a hard time getting the rest of the league to think that Kevin Love yeah. is worth what they think Kevin Love is. And they, have been hard, it's been, they haven't been able to make a deal because of that. Well, if you got Andre Drummond... Not for free, but for a very small price. Yeah. Maybe you let Kevin Love go 
for a lower price than you thought you were going to Maybe, and get some I don't of that think that's what release. it's about. And I think it's yeah. about this. Andre Drummond has a $28 million player option, right. which he may or may not pick up. I would advise him to pick it up. The Cavs are looking at it like we have tw they have about $28 million in cap room. They don't think they could use that $28 million on a player better than Andre Drummond. So in a way, this was a, a free agent move. Whether or not he, keep, he picks up the option, we'll see. All right, so let's move on from Andre Drummond. I, I want to get to Paul. Can you do go directly <laughs> into your camera here and make a pitch to Tristan Thompson to take uh, the buyout Tristan, so the Celtics can pick him up? You are the one player that can put the Boston Celtics over the top. Taking a couple extra less millions is worth it, buddy. I'm you don't mean it's that. Worth no, you don't, no, no, the answer is you don't take any less money, Tristan. You make the Cavs buy you out because mm -hmm. that they've, they've, they've just traded for your replacement. Right, but... And then you go sign and get more money. But look, they, Tristan could be part of, a, of another run in the Eastern Telly, Conference. Telly, that'll put him over the top. <laughs> That's look, just what they need, a physical presence, a veteran leader, a champion. So let's let's take a look at each conference and where we are here, right? So if we start in the East, to your point, the Boston Celtics didn't do anything yet, so they kind of stayed in place. You think the Heat improved? Do you think sure. the Heat made enough of a move that they leapfrogged the Celtics or the Raptors in terms of being a contender after the Bucks? Well, I'm not sure they just leapfrogged them, but you know they're a little bit better. I mean, um, like I said, I still think after the Milwaukee Bucks. Everybody else is in the same category from two all the way down from Celtics, Toronto, Indiana, Celtics, I mean, Philadelphia. They're all in the same boat. I However, think put, put those any standings, of those teams those can standings, lose in the first round. Put those standings back up there. I think in, this, in the Eastern Conference, getting to the number two seed is vital because look at where the 76ers are. 76ers, let's say they finish four or five. Mm -hmm. If you get the two seed. Then in the second round, you're you could, playing the Milwaukee Bucks. If you get the two seed, you don't have to oh, go no, play. No, no, no. I said yeah. if they finish four or five. That's right. right. I, I mean, I, we assume that the, the 76ers, are, they're, they're basically tied for fifth there. Yes. I'm betting on the 76ers to outplay the Pacers down the stretch. I think they'll finish four or five. The difference between being the two seed, the three seed, and the four seed in the East is huge to me. Huge. Because it means that you might not, not have not, especially if you're a team like the Celtics, who has one in three against the Sixers this year. So the Celtics are highly motivated. The Heat are highly motivated to get into that 2-3 zone. And I think that's why it's really important what the Heat did because getting the two seed or the three seed for the Heat is really, really meaningful for them going forward. Well, you know, th what's interesting for the Heat is that Pat Riley loves to think about his team as this collection of diamonds in the rough that he found and mm -hmm. they developed and they created this great culture around them. But I think in the last couple of weeks, they've had a, they've had two games against the Clippers mm -hmm. where you, you played against the best in the West and you lost both of them. And, yep. uh, and basically the same way. They just did not have enough talent. Right. And Jimmy I, Butler didn't play the fourth quarter last correct. night. Correct. But yes. But, but like we were at that game and you mm -hmm. could just tell that they, they're they not there. Yep. And I think they knew it. And how do you add to the team without changing the culture that you've built around these young guys that you have found and developed? All right. Well, don't forget about the defending champions, though, Paul. The Raptors have won yeah. 12 yeah. in a row. Yeah. I mean, the pa Pascal Siakam, the leaps he has continued to make. I feel like he can't keep leaping, but he keeps leaping. He looks great in scarves. Apparently, the whole team does. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, where are they in this? Man, they're scary. I mean, because yeah. when you're the defending champs, you, you carry a certain swagger and confidence. Even though they lost their best player, Kawhi, I feel like Siakam is, he's thriving in that role as the best player. He's become an all-star this year. He's doing everything this team needs of him. And, you know, you still got Lowry. You still got a lot of veteran guys over there who understand how yeah. to win. And so, like I said, outside of Milwaukee Bucks, everybody else is, like, right there. And anything, one injury... Well, that could change like, That can change too. the dynamics of everything in the playoffs. You know what, Paul? I was in the Heat locker room last night. Maybe this is foolhardy. Yeah. Maybe they were just excited because they just made this big trade. They are, do not fear the Milwaukee Bucks. Maybe That's what they, I'm saying. I mean, I, maybe, maybe that will be, maybe Giannis will laugh at them and pound them into the submission, but they do not fear the Milwaukee Bucks. The, the Miami Heat feel like they're going to win the Eastern Conference. Well, look, they just played Philadelphia and beat them by about 30 points. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. heard from several guys in that locker room, oh, I guess Philly just doesn't want this. So maybe we'll be taking this instead as that rival to Milwaukee. And remember, in the Eastern Conference, what happened on this day, trade deadline day, is what led to the championship of the NBA. There was that arms race, right, between Philadelphia making a deal and Milwaukee making a deal and Ooh. Toronto making a deal. Well, it was Toronto's deal for, for Marcus Gasol that ended up helping them win the day. So I want to look at the Western Conference now because we have teams in the West, Ramona. Yeah. Take a look at the standings here. Mm. Do you think any of these teams made a deal today that is going to lead them to the NBA title? The Clippers have to feel like they did. 
right? I mean, I think they have to feel like adding Marcus Morris to that mix. And especially keeping what, him away from the Lakers. Keeping him away from the Lakers yeah. um, was, was a big move for them because of the toughness he adds in the post, especially in the way that they match up with Anthony Davis and they match up with LeBron James. Like, he's a tough, physical guy mm -hmm. to get in there and 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 disrupt and make, make those two players uncomfortable. I mm -hmm. think it's not just about how he fits with their...